So impressed. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> you know, there's only one thing crazier than inventing the square wheel. And that's watching someone with a big, dumb smile on their face reinventing the square wheel. And there's only one thing worse than that. That's watching people cheeringly give over half a million dollars to watch someone reinvent the square wheel. We couldn't just make another portable coffee maker. No, that's right. You had to go make one that was significantly dumber than all of the others. In order to solve the problem, we had to design a product that would match the taste quality of an industrial machine, only available in expensive coffee shops. That's the one, it's the same pressure. Woo, done it! Wow, they've done it. That must be a really, really impressive milestone to cross. I'm absolutely positive that this is not some trivial achievement that I could match in seconds. For the first time, this means barista-style coffee wherever you go. That's awesome. The only thing that you need to make your coffee is some little thing that you can just put into your handbag. Unlike machines that use pods or cartridges, coffee jack can extract any espresso coffee of your choice. Okay, so I can't just take some pods that are you know, automatically the right grind of coffee. I've actually got to take ground coffee around with me wherever I go as well. We have designed an automatic tamper which will save you time whilst making your coffee. I'm making the thing this is amateur hour. Every espresso machine, every espresso machine that takes ground powder comes with a tamper. Coffee Jack sits directly over your mug to eliminate any mess. Yeah, I'm beginning to think these people have never actually made espresso before in their life. The mess with espresso machine typically comes from getting the ground coffee in to the extraction chamber to begin with and cleaning it out afterwards. Prefer your espresso in a smaller glass, we have an extraction stand available. Oh, you're gonna get burned for that. Simply fill with hot water and pump approximately eight times for a full quality espresso extraction. Uh, uh, sorry, what? I thought all I needed was this little portable coffee maker. Now I need to carry both the ground coffee, the coffee maker, and a kettle for making the boiling water. All great ideas start with a problem. There are over 16 billion disposed coffee cups every year with environmentally harmful plastic laminates and lids. That's great, but how exactly does a portable coffee maker solve that problem? Our solution is to reduce the desire for takeout coffee by making the quality available outside of expensive coffee shops. Ah, I think I might be able to help you on this one. You see, some time ago, someone invented something called the coffee machine that enabled people to get pretty decent coffee outside of a coffee shop. No more waiting around in queues. Yes, that's right. You can make pretty decent coffee at home and you don't need a disposable cup to do it. Now you can have great coffee at your desk while saving time and money. Uh, yes, but how is Coffee Jack necessary for any of this. With a cost saving of up to 85% per cup compared to the average coffee shop prices. I mean, holy crap, every single point that you've made has been a sales pitch for a coffee machine. I mean, yeah, choose a price point and a performance point. Any of these coffee machines will deliver you cheaper coffee than at a coffee shop. And you won't have to wait in queues or anything and you won't have to use disposable cups. But I'm sure I'm way too skeptical. I'm sure there's some really qualified people who are going to tell me this device will be awesome. A good quality of coffee, for sure. I'm going to make you a special cup. So impressed. I'm really looking forward to this. Yes, Gary, the uh, coffee expert, is really looking forward to this. Now, this one's actually a little close to my heart. Firstly, because they dance a little jig about getting up to a and bar in pressure of an industrial machine only available in expensive coffee shops. That's the one, it's the same pressure. Woo, done it! Wow, that's, that's so impressive. But mostly, because I love cappuccinos and lattes. Uh, live on the stuff. 
but I'm also kind of practical about it and have used coffee machines ranging from the hundred to thousand dollar type mark. And my honest appraisal was, nah. To me, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of difference. As long as the coffee machine makes decent coffee, it's basically down to time and ease of use. Which brings us on to Coffee Jack, the hand-pumped espresso machine, which have only been around for about a hundred or so years. Hardly anything new. Now, you will, of course, notice that these things classically look like they're fairly heavily constructed and look like they've got fairly solid-looking levers on them. Now, the reason for this, of course, is that for the espresso extraction to work properly, you need about 10 atmospheres of pressure, 10 bar. And to do that, you need a pretty decent-sized lever, the sort of thing you really wouldn't want pushing down on a cup. So how does Coffee Jack reduce the amount of force that you've got to put on it? Well, for this, we're going to take two regular syringes, and we're going to seal the tips off on them. So these are one and a quarter kilo weights. So that's two and a half kilos. That's five kilos. The bar itself weighs about two kilos. So here I have two syringes, which I've sealed off at the end. And both are sealed off such that they are at one atmosphere pressure when they're at the one mil mark or at the 10 mil mark. So if I squash these, they will they'll pop back and they would if they were completely sealed so if they were completely fluid they would equilibrate out at that mark there so if I halve the volume in them that means that I've got two bar of pressure in there so here I've got one bar of pressure two bars of pressure four bars of pressure and ten bars of pressure that's how hard it is to get 10 bars of pressure. Wow, they did so well to do this with their remarkable espresso machine. Of an industrial machine, only available in expensive coffee shops. That's the one, it's the same pressure. Woo, done it. So, um, how much weight do I, how much force do I actually have to put on there to get my, my 10 bars of pressure? So, I'm just gonna use the bar in the first instance and you're going to put that on there and it pretty much gets us straight down to 10 bars of pressure. So for a one mil syringe, you can compress... Let's <laughs> see the coffee machine going. So for a one mil syringe, uh, you can compress up to 10 bar with a mere two kilos of weight on top of it. Now that changes quite a lot when you go up to something about the size that they have with their coffee jack, which is about this sort of size. Now, all of a sudden, if I put a mere two kilos on, that's not bad. I guess it's almost up to a uh, two bar. Right. So, okay, let's add some more weight. Let's add... Now we're up to, what's this, about five kilos of weight, which now gets us down to four mils, okay. So let's go up to, that's five kilos just of weight there. Two kilos for the bar. This is seven kilos. It's actually getting fairly tricky just to lift with one arm. And that's going to get us down to about eh, two mils, that sort of region. So we need at least twice as much weight. Oh, you need twice as much weight as that uh, to get you your 10 bar. Let's try that again. Now about this time I should explain to you a little about espresso. 
It's a nightmare to get right. You need the right grind of beans. It can't be the regular coffee that you use for filter coffee. It's too coarse. Then you've got to get the temperature of the water right. Then you've got to get the pressure right. That's why they have evolved from this into this. Now, pressure is an important factor here. I was just using compressed gas simply so you could read off what the pressure in the syringe was by how far the piston had gone down. But if there was just water in that syringe, the pressure would be exactly the same. So I can get 10 bar out of a one mil syringe by applying a couple of kilos of weight to the top. But of course, I can only pump about one milliliter at a time. So I'd have to pump this 60 or so times to get my espresso shot. Or I could use something like Coffee Jack. Apart from here, I have to apply almost 10 kilos of force to this thing and pump it half a dozen times. Simply fill with hot water and pump approximately eight times. Now, not only is applying that force to the top of a shatterable object kind of uh, dangerous, you know, those things can get cracked and uh, that's basically the end of it. But also, this thing that you're squeezing on is full of boiling water to begin with. It's not contained in any way. And you've got to put 10 kilos of force on it and squeeze it about 10 times. I don't know, maybe now would be a suitable time to look at the size of stand that they think would be suitable for repeatedly pumping 10 kilos of force on. If you prefer your espresso in a smaller glass, we have an extraction stand available. Or you could just use a regular hand-pulled espresso machine and just pull it once. But Coffee Jack is smaller, right? Well, it almost makes no difference if you need a kettle to heat the water and then you've got to have the right ground coffee and so forth. And then they look at their Kickstarter supporters with a straight face and tell them, but it doesn't need any electricity to use. While the actual promotional video shows it being filled with an electric kettle. Holy smokes, these guys are bold. But like I was saying, a lot of coffee is actually about convenience. Me, I've actually got one of those bean grinding one push latte type machines, which cost about a thousand dollars. And honestly, the coffee that you get out of it is comparable to mid range capsule machines. But the difference being that with a capsule machine, you can put in whatever coffee you want from one capsule to the next. But with a grinder machine like this, you're locked in to whatever beans you've put into the hopper. Well, the auto milk frother is nice, but the fact that you've got the milk typically standing around in those jugs for days at a time, it reduces the quality of the milk. Plus cleaning it out is much more complicated, more of a pain in the ass. Honestly, I found that microwaving the milk for about 30 seconds, followed by a $5 whisk, gives comparable results. A froth in your milk. You get one of these whisks for a couple of bucks. These things are, it must be said, both fearsome and awesome. And in a few seconds, you basically have frothed milk. I've also tried these sort of bridge products where it actually heats the milk and then froths it for you. And honestly, there's not really that much between any of these. Now, did I get value and money out of my thousand dollar coffee machine? Well, for me, probably. I drink several coffees a day. So even, even if it only lasted one year, the cost would be about a dollar per day. And it's gone way past five years at the moment. The one thing that I can tell you about machines like this, compared to the more traditional coffee machines, which I've also used extensively, is these things are a pain in the ass to clean. They're much messier, much more work intensive. And what exactly does Coffee Jack do? Well, it replaces the electric pump in this thing with a hand pump, doesn't heat the water, doesn't have a steaming wand, and he's just as much of a pain in the ass to clean as these machines. And then you've got to worry about getting your ground coffee. Now you can either grind your beans yourself, which of course means you need a coffee grinder, 
or you can get it pre-ground. But you can't leave it around for too long if it's pre-ground because all the volatiles tend to evaporate off and the coffee doesn't taste as nice. Which, I should mention, is one of the reasons why the capsule coffees have become so popular. is because the beans are always the right grind and they're also sealed for the freshness. So, in summary, Coffee Jack takes all the worst features of the low-end coffee machine, then makes it more dangerous and dumber. I know, maybe I'm just way too hard on these people. I should give them a chance, you know. Maybe they're going to be brilliant, like Elon Musk or something. Sure? Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh man, it didn't go through. Well, on their Kickstarter page, this is them saying about all the people who have been really impressed and featured their products. Free Bracane have been featured by Bristol Post, BBC, Amazon, and Mashable, and, and so forth. Well, all I can tell you is I did a quick search for BBC and their brand name, and I can find no mention of them. And as far as Amazon goes, it looks like they have a pen listed on there or something. But hey, no, no, no. Let's take a look at their risk appraisal for this project. The final way we've eliminated risk on this project is believing that we will deliver nothing less than the exceptional product we've promised. We have an unbelievable amount of belief our latest and greatest invention and want to invite you on the journey in helping us make Coffee Jack a reality. So their secret weapon in eliminating risk is belief. Ah, belief, the last refuge of a scoundrel. So if you enjoyed that, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on new uploads. And if you really like this video, you can either support this channel by going to my Amazon store below where you'll find all the coffee products that I personally go for, not sponsored by any of these, bear in mind, this is just my honest opinion. Or you can support this channel directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.